Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, skeletons in the closet. So a skeleton knife is a knife that doesn't have handle scales and has little holes that are kind of cut out of the uh, tang. Very simple knife to make and a lot of fun for a basic type project. All right, no more talk. Let's get started. Here's what this project requires in the way of material. Steel. Period. It's a skeleton knife, meaning it has no handle scales, no bolsters, no pins, no guard, no nothing. In this case, We'll use a piece of one by one and a quarter by one eighth inch 1095 high carbon steel. You can use a thicker material if you have it, three sixteenths, maybe even a quarter inch, but you probably don't want to go narrower than an inch and a quarter, so you have a little room to play with when you're drilling all the various holes that are involved. First, we'll lay out the design on our piece of steel. I'm staining the steel with layout fluid, the standard machinist's approach to layout and I've got a paper template to guide me in the process. Now, there are all kinds of fancy ways of laying things out, but we're gonna be using some cheapo hacks. I'll scribe a few lines using my ruler. Now, I'm not looking for perfection here, just a guide to work from in the next phase of the project. Then I'll use a jar lid, and a paint can to transfer some arcs to the drawing. Again, we're not looking for perfection here. It's just a reference to help us out on the belt grinder. Incidentally, when laying out the design, I'm gonna be working from a plan that you can find on my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron at some particular level or anything. Anybody who becomes a patron on Patreon can access the plans for this and plenty of other projects I've done on YouTube. Just help out the channel on Patreon, you get all the plans. This project has a ton of drilling. I'll show a variety of methods so that whether you have a $10,000 mill with a DRO or a 79 buck bench top drill press, you'll have a method of getting your holes drilled in the right place. Are there other approaches to drilling than what we'll show here? Of course, but here are a couple of approaches that work. Let's start by laying out the holes for the handle. They'll be 3 8 inch holes, but we won't just stampede to the drill press and start knocking holes in the steel. First, I'll scribe a center line down the knife. Then I'll mark the locations of the centers every 5 eighths of an inch with my scribe. I'm using tape to hold my ruler in place so that all the hole locations I scribe will stay exactly in line. Then I'll use a homemade prick punch to locate the holes as precisely as my tired old eyes will allow. Next. I'll use an automatic center punch to make a bigger divot to use as a guide for my drill. You can just as easily use a simple hammered punch here. The key is just to locate the position of the first punch by feel, then expand it with the second punch. I'll be using a carbide spotting drill to make a little divot in the steel, which will then guide the subsequent drills, maintaining the correct location. See, if you just blast into a piece of steel with a drill, the bit will tend to walk, meaning that it'll sort of skate around on the surface of the steel. And once it starts biting, it'll inevitably drill the hole in an incorrect location. But by spotting the hole, then drilling it with a pilot drill, then with the final drill, we'll maintain the holes in their correct location. <laughs> I'll clamp my blank in an El Cheapo drilling vise. Now the hole's been spotted with the spotting drill. Now I'll swap out the fancy carbide spotting drill for a good old Home Depot grade quarter inch drill. I'll use a technique of finding the hole with the tip of the drill, then letting the force of the drill as it rotates sort of walk the vise into place. Now the vise here is just sitting on the table. It's not bolted down. This is not a smart thing to do on a high-powered industrial drill because a big drill can snatch up your vise, smash your hand, 
fling the vice, wreck your work, break your bit, and a bunch of other suboptimal stuff. But on a bench top quarter horse drill like this, firm pressure from your hand on the vise once it's seated will keep the drill glued to the vise and prevent those problems once the drill has seated itself. And we'll drill on through, afterward repeating the process for each hole. Finally, we'll drill the hole to final dimension with a 3 8 inch drill. In this case, we're using a fancier tool, a mill with a DRO or digital readout, which shows the location of the drill to two ten thousandths of an inch. That's a little more precision than we really need for this, but still, it comes in handy. So, basic idea is the same here, but we don't really need to mark all our locations, just the location of the first drilling operation. So we lock the Y on the table and run from one end to the other, doing each hole in sequence. Spotting. Then drilling with a quarter inch stub length drill. Then moving to the 3 8 drill. Truthfully, a stub length drill like this, which deflects significantly less than the longer and more commonly found jobber length drill that you'd find at Home Depot, probably doesn't need to be spotted for a project like this. But, just to show how it's done, we'll do it anyway. Now we'll also drill in the Spanish notch in the blade using the same method. Whew, that was tight. Didn't drill the vice jaw, but I came darn close. This is why even though the final width of the knife is about an inch, you need wider stock to give you clearance for some of these drilling operations. Finally, we'll drill a series of holes which will serve to form the jimping on the thumb ramp. Now, you can lay them out like we did earlier, but it'll be tough to maintain quite the accuracy required to get these fairly small and precisely located holes right. So, we'll just show the mill method. The locations are frankly stupid precise. I've got them all listed on the plans with dimensions to the thou. If you want to stop here and kind of look at the plans, you can do that, or you can pick them up on Patreon. But if you don't want to be all anal and use the plans, you can just file in the jimping by hand using a method I'll show in a minute. Or skip the jimping entirely. It's your knife. Do it the way you feel like. I'm using the center of my first hole as a zero zero on the plans, then twiddling away using the DRO to locate the seven holes in a row. First I'll spot all the holes, then I'll use a 1 8 inch drill to drill through. If you're supporting the stock with parallels, which would be pretty much the normal way of doing this, make sure you slide the parallels back so you don't drill through them. A favorite machinist blunder that I've of course never made, but uh, have read about. Now it's time to profile the blade on the belt grinder. I'll use the work table to rough out most of the edges. Then the radii for several of the curves will be made using various wheels on the grinder. It 
If everything's done right, we'll grind away about two-thirds of each hole on the thumb ramp, leaving a series of small indentations for the jimping. I'll clean them up a little by filing them with a needle file. A diamond file can be used here, or a conventional file. Like I said earlier, if you skip drilling the holes on the thumb ramp because you don't have a mill with a DRO, you can do the jimping completely by hand using the same methods I'm showing here. Next, I'll chamfer the edges of the handle holes using a countersink and a hand drill. The next step is to grind the bevels. After marking a center line using a scribe, I'll grind the bevels on the belt grinder. The center line helps me to maintain symmetrical bevels. I was talking to someone in the shop as I was shooting the video, and of course I didn't end up paying full attention to what I was doing. The bevels should be ground all the way back to the Spanish notch, basically bisecting the notch, but I sort of spaced out on that, so I'll fix my goof after heat treat. Speaking of, heat treating, that's the next step. In order to harden the knife, I'll heat the blade to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit in my forge, then quench it in oil. This is a specialized heat treating oil called Parks Number no. 50, but blades can be quenched in vegetable oils, mineral oil, and a variety of other oils. Results will differ somewhat depending on the type of oil used, however. Some will cause the entire blade to harden, some won't, some will just give you a little edge hardening. I'm checking the blade with a small handheld magnet. At about 1425 degrees, the magnet stops being attracted to the steel. So I just raise the temperature a hair more, moving it rapidly in and out of the fire in order to evenly heat the blade. When everything looks right, the blade is plunged into heat treating oil. Only the blade goes in. I'm leaving the handle soft and shock resistant, so only the blade is hardened. You don't have to do it that way if you want to harden the whole thing. Nothing wrong with that. A quick test with the file shows the blades hardened. So it's into my heat treating oven at 400 degrees for two cycles of an hour each. Now the blades ground to final shape, including running the plunge line back to its correct location at the Spanish notch, as I described earlier. Honestly, if I had it all to do over, I'd skip the notch. With this guardless design, it just increases the likelihood of you cutting yourself inadvertently if your hand slips a little bit up the knife. But hey, live and learn. Anyway, additionally, this final grind will include some minor refinement of the lines, softening of the corners of the handle for comfort, and so on. I'll also do a little sanding to remove tool marks from the chamfers inside the handle holes. As a final step for this video anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use my abrasive blasting cabinet to finish the knife. Now I'll probably be adding a Cerakote finish after this, but I haven't really decided. So for now, we're done. And here's the final result. Let's face it, nothing fancy, but a light, functional, unobtrusive blade that can be carried really easily, thrown in a pack, a glove compartment, given a cord-wrapped handle, or just left plain. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. 
If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!